faster than I do. <laughs> also, it autocorrected to gawked, and I'm like, nope, that's not right. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pretty sure this is Guy Fox Day. Okay. And Matt and Jonathan? My autocorrect turned it into Guy Fakes Day. <laughs> <laughs> we also went with Fox and said Guy Fox Day. Uh, I would have gone with golf and Guy Fox Day or Guy Fox Night. That is the correct answer. Ten points to both teams. Is Guy Fox Day my birthday, by the way? I think it is. November 5th. Yeah, it is your birthday. So you just need to get a cool mask there, Jonathan. I have a cool mask. You've never seen me without it. That's true. Valid point. When you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right. All right. <laughs> so your last question, round five, is in European history. And the question is, along with Spain, England, and the Holy Roman Empire, what unlikely country fought in the War of the League of Cambra, and that's C-A-M-B-R-A-I, from 1511 to 1516? Canbari? C-A-N-B-A-R-I? Cambria. Yes. I think, uh, uh, yeah, Cambria. Cambria. Yeah. C-A-M-B-R-A-I. Yeah. Well, it's not Cambria, then. Is it A-I or I-A? It's A-I. All right, we're locked in. Okay. I don't know what this is, Matt. I've n- never heard of yeah. the League of Cambrai. Yeah. I've never heard of the League of Cambria I, either. So I've heard of Coheed and Cambria. Yes, yeah, so I've heard of the font Cambria. <laughs> <laughs> it, I, I, it honestly makes me wonder if you might have mistyped it, Chris, because Cambria is a thing. Uh, I've never heard of Cambrai. I will double check. Give me just a moment, please, sir. And it is C-A-M-B-R-A-I. I did spell it correctly. Okay, thank you. So Spain and England, this is before the navies became a big deal. Uh, so yep. it's not Armada-related. Armada the HRE would be, you're talking about things like Italy and Germany and, and right up the middle of the right side of the continent. I, I feel yeah. like this is maybe Denmark? Yeah, I was going to say the Danes, because you watch Viking sh- That's kind of everybody was coming from Denmark. There's a show I've been watching, and it's the Danes are in England, and it's around that same time period. I, that would have been my first guess, too, Jonathan, is to go the northern, somewhere that Scandinavian-type country that's not typically like with Spain, France, what you would think, Italy. But, yeah, I think Denmark was one of my first – Denmark or – but I don't think Norway, Sweden, Finland, you don't hear those guys in there. No. But Denmark absolutely was was uh, moving out looking for agricultural lands in other countries. Well, And also this feels like this is within the Hundred Years' War area, and Denmark was a major player in the Hundred Years' War, like uh, King Christians. There's a bunch of King Christians, I think. Yeah. So that feel, that's why I got there. Uh, so I'd be cool with playing Denmark. Yeah, I think that's, we were kind of on that same wavelength, so I can go with Denmark and and, and live with that. Okay, we'll lock in Denmark. Uh, yeah, we picked up on Unlikely. We are hoping it was a clue. Um, we went with Switzerland because they're usually neutral in a lot of wars. So when he said Unlikely, we went with uh, Switzerland. You know, that's a pickup of a good clue if that's the right answer. Yeah. And the answer is, it was the last war they ever fought in. It is Switzerland. Wow. Good job, Joe. Wow. Joe, like, Switzerland, yeah. I'm like, that would be unlikely. <laughs> Props. Props. That's, 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 that's impressive. <laughs> well done. All right. After five rounds, Carmel and Joe keep the lead. 144 to Matt and Jonathan's 116. All right. And this is round six. And round six, I usually give this round to uh, one of our uh, uh, awesome Patreon listeners to uh, uh, write the questions for. And I want to say thank you so much to Brian Nash for writing these next three questions. Thanks, Brian. I hope they're all about video games. (laughs) Get me (laughs) Spider-Man. That's right. Uh, uh, Yes, J.K. Simmons, we appreciate you so much. Brian did the new intro uh, voiceover for Things That Are Blank this season, by the way. Oh, that's fantastic. Absolutely. You can hear his vocal stylings on that show. And by the way, this is season two of Things That Are Blank. The whole year is pre-recorded. They're they're about to record the absolute like final championships now that are going to air at the end of the year. And so we know what's going to happen this year. It's really freaking cool. So if you're not, if you haven't been listening to Things That Are Blank, it's a really, really good season. A lot of fun. So your uh, first question in the uh, Brian Nash round is in movies. Movies. And your question is, which 2016 presidential hopeful has exactly one movie acting credit, 
when they played a surgeon in the less than stellar Farrelly Brothers comedy, Stuck on You. Yeah. Yeah, this movie sucked. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I'm honestly, I'm cool with that, Joe. <laughs> you want to go with that? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right. We're locked in. And they're having fun. That's the best part. Uh, so, yeah, I suck at uh, all things, all things campaign related. Uh, so I threw out the names Biden, Clinton, Santorum, Huckabee. I, I don't remember any of the Republican. Oh wait, um, no, not I don't know. I don't think Romney did, but Rick Perry is a guy, the Texas guy. Rick Perry um, did wrong. Uh, think of all the of people Democrat. that think of all the people that Trump insulted, and that's like going to be a good list of all the other people that were in the race. <laughs> we're going to be here for a while. If you right? Every person, yeah, he's ever insulted on the campaign trail. Warren, Lying to Cruz, little Marco. I mean, he had all kinds of names for people over there. Setting the uh, timer for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so a Rubio is a fair point. Rubio. Cruz. Yeah. Okay. So, do you know the movie at all? I've, I've never seen the movie. I no. No, it's uh, I've heard of it, obviously, but I haven't seen it. it. Was Chris Christie a candidate in 2016? Because that seems like the kind of thing he might do a Fairly Brothers movie. That's a good idea. Yeah, Chris Christie came started out in the campaign. He did. That's. I mean, that's not a terrible answer. I don't know anything about the Fairly Brothers. What about Hillary Clinton? I don't think so. That's something she would do. I have she no was idea. On Between Two Ferns and was hilarious on Between Two Ferns. If you saw that with Zach Galifianakis, I didn't see it. Now, to take a night chance show. to look at that, yeah, um, yeah. I like Chris Christie's work. It, it, if it had been an Adam Sandler movie. I'd feel better about Chris Christie. He seems like he yeah. might have been an Adam Sandler movie. But okay, hold on, hold on. Let's back up. Let's back up. A Hollywood movie, probably going to be on the liberal side of the spectrum. I don't know much about the Fairley brothers, but maybe they wouldn't. Maybe it won't be a Republican candidate. Yeah, that's why I was looking Democrat. So, like, you had Hillary, you had Bernie, um, were the two big ones. I, you know what? I don't know. It could be. It could be anybody, honestly. Any, any of those, yeah. We, we got like to give an answer, to... though. Yeah. What do you want to do? I, I want to say Clinton. I, this is because I don't know. I mean, I don't think it was Bernie. If you think about presidential hopeful, yeah. My that's problem. Like with, she... My problem with that is that she was the main candidate, and you wouldn't call. I mean, calling that calling that person a presidential hopeful. That's not. That's like here's a really easy answer. You know. Yeah. True. So what, wait, would you want to do like – then you want to do Christie? You think Chris Christie? You know what? I, I'm arguing against yours, but I don't have a good one to put in its place. We oh. can go Clinton. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Let's go Hillary Clinton. All right. Uh, Chris Christie's a pretty good answer. I kind of wish you thought of that because that, that sounds like something Chris Christie would do. However, Joe threw out Ben Carson, who is an, an, an actual surgeon, uh, and that would be so hilarious to me to see him in a movie because <laughs> I'm like <laughs> – uh, my opinion of Ben Carson aside, but anyway, um, but I think this movie is like it's got Greg Kinnear in it. It's about conjoined twins. It's it's a weird movie, but we end up going with Ben Carson. Well, the answer is the one surgeon that was uh, running for president. It was Ben Carson. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, man. Hunt, uh, secretary, <laughs> Matt. It's not like we're playing badly. We're, yeah. we're either on the right answers or we're near the right answers. But good God, uh, one of those days. One of those days. All those like li- the the Democratic candidates, like all, like all of them were on Saturday Night Live, and I figured that would be acting credits for them. So I thought he said yeah, movie yeah, though. Too. I thought oh, he said yeah. movie credit. Oh, yep, has exactly one movie acting credit. Oh, never mind. <laughs> well, points, points, man. <laughs> Your uh, second question, the Brian Nash round, is in science. Arms. Thank you. On the periodic table of elements, I want you to name one of the two elements that are last alphabetically. All right. Two minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> I already know the answer I want to give. I'm just making sure that Joe's okay with it. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. All right. We're locked in. <laughs> they are locked in. So I asked Matt if he could think of any that started with um, a Z, and he said zinc. And I'm like, I don't know if zinc is an element. And I'm worried that zinc might not be an element. And I know that there's there's like a there's a really weird name one that's like yttrium, which is like yy 
I T T R I U M or something like that. And I'm confident that is an element. I don't know if zinc is an element. Yeah, I don't know. And, and, Every time I come on the show, it's there's going to be periodic tables, and I'm terrible at it. Actually, gave you the name of the show one time I was on because it could be. I said it could be Scooby Dooium, and I don't know. <laughs> it just, it's I just it's not my not my. I have gone through in through grad school with never taking a chemistry class, so shame on me, obviously. But uh, man, I just have no idea. Zinc was the only thing I could come up with, Jonathan. That was a Z. Is it on the table? No idea. I don't. I don't know for sure. I'd rather go yttrium. Okay. And, and hope I'm yeah. pronouncing it closely enough. Oh, the YTT one? It's either Yttrium. YYT or YTT or what, yeah, something mm-hmm. like that. I think it's pronounced yttrium. Yeah, I think you're right. So that's what that's what we'll go with. Okay. All right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm saying this more to, to you than to, to the audience. When we reduce this from, one, uh, from two elements to one element, it makes this question super easy because zinc is 100% on oh, the Jesus. periodic table chart. <laughs> And so this makes this a round one question, not a round six question, in my opinion. But yeah, we we went with zinc. And your answers are z- zirconium and zinc. Oh no! And, zir- and, and zirconium oh, is the one that Joe threw out. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, 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 Matt. Well, bro. Mate. Well, well, well like round one question, day, huh, Carmela? Yeah. <laughs> I think you overcomplicated it because if this was a round one question, you would have gone with zinc. I don't think I would have. I, don't, I wasn't sure zinc was on the table. Of course, the table's not my strength either, so whatever. <laughs> all right. I always love a good table. We'll Play always games we'll, on it, eat on it. We'll always have lithium, Matt. <laughs> yeah, <that's right>. <laughs> lithium. <laughs> all right. Your last question in the Brian Nash round is in North American geography or geography. And Brian's question to you is which of the great lakes extends the furthest South? All right. I'm good with that. We can lock that in. We're locked in guys. I feel like Michigan is the, the one that visually stands out and it's at the level, the the tip of Lake Michigan Southwise is at Chicago. So if you draw a line from Chicago to the Atlantic, does it pass through any great lakes? Well, you have, uh, Cleveland sets on Erie. You have and it sits in the on that northern border of Ohio, Pennsylvania. Cleveland sits on Erie. I believe so in that area. Okay, it's in that area. I don't know whether it sits on it or not. I don't know, but it's in that area. But Lake Erie, that South Buffalo, Buffalo south of Buffalo Erie Canal. Erie south. I know that. I thought. Are you sure that Cleveland isn't on Michigan? Like on the south? Uh, like well, Cleveland would be over by Lake Huron and Lake in that area. I mean, I'm trying to visualize the states here, right? So Illinois, yeah. what's to what's directly to the right of Illinois? Oh, is it Iowa? Indiana. So to the east or west? Let's go to that the way. east. <laughs> to the east is Indiana. Indiana is, is next to – I'm not good at this. Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania goes to the east. Michigan's north. The Michigan's got the – the hands, as I pull my hands up, nobody can see. But and, and Joe's smiling. But you have you have uh, a Great Lake on the, on yeah. the east of it, and Lake Michigan on the west. Right, of but it. Lake Michigan and goes all the way down Illinois. Well, halfway down Illinois to you get to Chicago. So yeah. I can't visualize uh-huh. the other ones being further south. But if you're telling me Cleveland is on a Great Lake, Cleveland might be further south than Chicago. It's north. It's in that northwest corner. It's they're all up there, kind of on that same line. For me, I think Michigan's the easy answer. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but I think if it's if I have to ask, but unless there's some weird tributary coming out of one of the lakes that they're calling part of the lake, but for me, it's either Michigan or Erie. It's going to be close. Well, I'll let you take the answer, dude, because I don't, I don't, I don't have good. I always struggle with that area. Well, the way it's going today, Jonathan, we're going to get the wrong answer. So, I mean, just it's we're going. That's why I'm deferring to you. (laughs) Oh, he's 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 making you the fault party here. So, you want to use Matt's wrong answer? I get that. That's perfect. (laughs) I like that. that. So, uh, I I would go Erie. I know Jonathan would go Michigan, and he's deferred to me. So, I'm going to say Lake Erie. All right, and then he can yell later. (laughs) Well, in my head, it was between Michigan and Erie, but uh, Joe. Uh, had some had some thunder, and he lives near Great Lakes, so I trusted his opinion. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, we uh, we had a cabin in Canada as a kid, and we always had to. It was right on Lake Erie, and I think that's a little farther south than the tip of Lake Michigan. 
because Cleveland does sit on Lake Erie, um, mm. but then it goes even farther um, east 